friend is at Survivor.com. It's me, Mario. <laughs> you guys, number one. Hey everyone, Steve from Survivor here with a quick little friendly fire show addendum. This little mini episode, we have uh, Benjamin Hall, who's the world director on Far Cry 6. He sat down to speak with me uh, about some of the, the worldly aspects of Far Cry 6 alongside some of the uh, maybe non-world specific things. So we talked about uh, inclusion, we talked about new uh, features to the game like holster in your weapon and exploration. Uh, as well as guerrilla camps, which will play a very important role in Danny's quest to liberate Yara. Without any further ado, let's get into the interview. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Ben. How are you? Hi, I'm doing great. Thanks. How are you? Not too bad. Thank you. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is stupid, but I can't stop thinking about it. I know I heard the Wilhelm scream in that presentation yesterday, and as well as the Macarena, of course. Can you? Is that Was that for the presentation, or does that... Is that going to be in the game? If you push someone off a cliff, are you going to get the Wilhelm scream? Uh, this is a great question. I'd probably for that one, I'd have to speak to Nav just to double check. Uh, for the for the Macarena, I know that we do, we do have that. Actually, he's going to play when you when you shoot the CDs from the CD launcher. Nice. Well, I'll take I'll take one of two, and I'll I'll keep pestering well, like, yeah. you guys about the other one, which is fine. <laughs> Um, I talk, it seems like yesterday, but it also seems like 17 years ago. I talked to Naveed about Far Cry 6 back in July, I guess, last year. Um, so I, I have to do the obligatory COVID follow-up update, I think. Um, he seemed pretty happy and confident that your team was able to, you know, like pivot. Um, and, and, you know, had, development hadn't changed as much as it obviously has to change because of what's going on. Um, I guess a couple months on, how's it going? Have you guys had to to adapt even further? Have you found it pretty easy? General boring kind of, but important COVID questions that I guess I'll throw at you before we can uh, get to the nitty gritty. Yeah, sure. I mean, COVID's impacted us like it's it's been impacted pretty much the whole planet in that we've, you know, we wanted to make sure that our, our team can, can stay safe during this pandemic. So Ubisoft made a, a big, a big switch very, very quickly to get people to be able to work from home, uh, get technology that was already being piloted and tested within the industry anyway, set up for people so that everyone could stay safe and stay home. It certainly did have an impact in certain areas of the game um, for, for just, you know, the logistics of things to making sure it could be done safely and everyone could stay safe doing it. There's other parts of it that have, have definitely, you know, it's actually in some ways improved in terms of this digital communication, similar to what we're doing right now, being able to have these kinds of conversations with, you know, with the entire team at the same time has definitely, you know, had some positivity, but, but for sure, yeah, you know, the team are, are continuing to work hard, stay safe, uh, and hopefully we can get through this soon. Nice. All my, all my family are back closer to where you are right now. Um, I'm not sure where yours are, but I detect an accent. I'm that smart. Um, so hopefully things quiet down soon. And if your family is somewhere else, you get a chance to go visit them. I'm I'm looking forward to it eventually. They're in Saskatoon, but like okay. mostly getting vaccinated. Yeah. So it sounds like it's you're doing a lot better in terms of vaccinations than, than Australia is. But that's an entirely different story. Um. I guess I'm kind of counting all my questions as world questions, but I don't know if it's true or not. Um, I guess I'm kind of curious first as to kind of what you see falling under your jurisdiction as a uh, world director. So as world director, I've been looking after obviously, you know, the team building Yara. We've been working on building the the landscape, the, the, the POIs, the elements of the world, but also the activities, the missions uh, and, and the things that you're going to be doing in Yara. Working in, in close collaboration with the other key directors, so with Navid, with, with Omar, with Alex, so that we can continue to work together cohesively so we can build this, uh, th this, this project together. Nice. Well, there's a lot kind of changing from the traditional Far Cry formula. And I know like character questions aren't, I guess, technically your purview, but I'm still going to ask you some of these because I think they're important. Um, especially watching the trailers yesterday and the presentation yesterday, it just kind of struck me how there's not this like white person just kind of like jumping into the world and, and saving it. Like in three, you know, like this, it's like totally just a white dude who's like, I'm going to fix this place. Or even in four, it's 
It's like a, a North American influenced character who's going to jump in and, and fix his old hometown. Um, how purposeful was that? That it is, you know, like a, a Yarin in Yara working for Yara and not some sort of like external influence coming in to, to save the day, to save these people. It was important for Danny to be a Yaren for multiple reasons, but but one of the main ones that really stood out to us was that we want because we wanted to build this guerrilla revolution, we wanted to, to have Danny have have a, a click, have a spark, have something that was was worth fighting for, and and that was what was very important for for Danny to be a, to be a Yaren was like when you get to experience and meet Danny for the first time in the game. They don't want to be a gorilla. They don't want to be in Yara anymore. They actually they want to leave Yara, get out, go and start a new life somewhere else. They've seen the country kind of ground to a halt, uh, and they've become disillusioned with the the whole state of affairs in the country. And it's really when they get to see firsthand the oppression and the tyranny of, of Anton and what lengths he'll go to to try and rebuild paradise that that Danny starts to see that actually no this this is my home. This is something I, I want to fight for, and and these are my people. Uh, and that was that was purpose. That was very purposeful from the beginning. Far Cry Six lets the player put their weapons away and just interact with the world, which is something literally world changing when it comes to the franchise. Um, I guess first, how how has that changed how you've had to develop a Far Cry game? What, how is you know because it's obviously very different from from what we're used to. Yeah, the whole string system that we've developed for Far Cry Six was was something that was was key uh, again as part of Danny being a Yar and that they know people and they can blend in with people and uh, and you know kind of disappear into the landscape. So it was important for us to be able to create the sensation of of exploration because as a guerrilla you need to be able to to scout places out. So with the holstering system, as long as you're outside of a military restricted zone, as long as you keep away from from the military, you don't get too close, uh, as long as you don't cause any trouble, you can put your weapons away and you'll be able to go and fish, you'll be able to go and explore the world, you'll be able to find things, you'll be able to interact with things, uh, you'll be able to uncover information and new stories and speak to people to find out more information. So it really did change the the sensation of, of the exploration, which which has been super important nice and you've kind of touched on this just just then but i guess so that means there are definitely things that are present that will reward the player for just you know like putting guns down and exploring the world be it like lore or maybe like weapon upgrades or it sounds like maybe missions that lead to weapon upgrades or things along that line is that am i kind of getting am i grasping the concept correctly Absolutely, yeah. Exploration is a really big part of Far Cry Six because, again, it, it, you know, everything we did, we looked at with the two lenses of how would it work for the guerrilla and and how would it work for Anton and, and his army. So when it came to the guerrilla side, you know, they're underpowered, they're undertooled, they don't have access to tanks and helicopters and and airplanes and all these kinds of things. So it was important for us to find these ways in which the guerrilla could go out and explore the world, find these interesting things. And then and then go and speak to people like Juan Cortez, who's going to work with you on building things like the Resolver weapons and and the Supremo backpacks that were there. That was all key to being able to make uh, Danny and a gorilla feel like you know they can fight like 1,000, like a one gorilla army to try and shift the balance of power from the military to the gorilla. Nice. Um, and I, I guess on the topic of gorilla, um, gorillas, there's gorilla camps now that are dotted along a, 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 along the landscape, upon the landscape. You get what I mean. Um, we, we're used to having like hub areas, but I guess we're not used to having a lot more hub areas. I guess probably smaller than what we're used to in Far Cry. Can, can you, I guess, talk about guerrilla camps uh, some more so I can fully understand how it's going to change the game and the established formula? So yeah, guerrilla camps uh, are, the, are the place where, uh, as you mentioned, the, the hub that the guerrillas are going to you know hang out in. It's the place you're going to go to to tool up to plan, to prepare, to find out more information, to to develop the story further, um, to do some of the, the, the activities that you'll be able to find in the world can take place at some of the guerrilla camps too. So we, we really wanted to work on these these spaces as being, it's a safe zone, it's a place where the guerrillas can hang out, they're away from the military. So it's a, you know, you get to learn a little bit more about the people when they're in the guerrilla camps. They've got, you know, everyone's got their weapons down. Everyone, you know, it's the place where they'll sit around the fire, things are discussed, things are talked about. There are also places where you can install different elements. You can actually upgrade the guerrilla camps throughout the, the progress of the game. And they're going to give you different, you know, inlets into into extra parts and different parts of the game uh, as you progress. Nice. It sounds like there's like a huge emphasis on exploration, which I am all about. 
I've been playing Mass Effect and I just forget that I'm playing the game and I'm just like looking around, reading things. So I'm I'm really excited to learn more about Yara, to learn more about Danny and, and the gorillas and all this. So this is like right up my alley. Um, it's a tradition here. We've asked Dan about three and four. We asked Navid about um, five or six. Sorry, we asked Dan about four and five. Anyway, we've asked people at Ubisoft developing the games what their favorite um, beast is within their Far Cry game. So Navid has given me an answer already for six. I'm not going to tell you what it is just yet because I'm hoping to get yours. And if it's the same, I'll let you know. But I'm curious to what your favorite animal is. It be it like a, a fang for hire or you know like a, a predatory beast that's out to get you. What kind of captured your attention with with your game? Oh, that's such a great question. Uh... I mean, we've got a really wide range of amigos, the, the the beasts that you'll be able to partner with and go into combat with. I used the but wrong the term. I'm sorry. That was last part. That's okay. <laughs> that's, that's no worries. But the, the funny thing is, is, you know, throughout development, as things get put into the game, obviously, you know, we have some interesting stories of things that happen that, the, you know, the players don't get to see. Um, I, I'm going to say the mongoose, and, mm-hmm. and I'm going to leave it at that so that, you know, maybe people read it and they take away the mongoose. It's for a very strange reason, and and maybe we can talk about that oh. again in the future. I'm gonna have to double back around at least to get James to email you saying, "Can you now explain the mongoose?" I'm sure. Well, um, it might explain itself. Uh, Dan talked about the honey badger, which is probably self-explanatory now. You know, after we jumped in, uh, Navid said yep. chorizo, which I guess is probably unsurprising. He's the most adorable thing ever. Um, he talked to us about. And it was kind of in the presentation that Teresa will kill enemies with kindness. And I'm wondering if I can get any more out of out of you about that or if it's closely guarded until we play the game, which is also absolutely fine. But I gotta try. It's a good it's a good try. I can talk a bit about, a bit more about that actually. So the amigos and like I mentioned, we we've actually got one of the largest rosters of amigos uh, in a Far Cry game. We really, you know, we doubled down on it because of, of how, you know, how much fun they are to have with you. And they're much more now like a partner in crime. The, you know, you, you go into to battle with your amigo and you know, they're along for the ride. So what we also wanted to do was to make sure that they fit within the the you know the the key elements of gameplay, which is all about this agency. The gear pieces that you you put on have a different impact on on how you play. It's the same with the Supremos. It's the same with the the resolver weapons. Everything that you do, everything that you wear, everything you take with you is going to change the the play style. And it's the same with the Amigos. So Chorizo actually does kill with kindness in that, you know, the expectation isn't that he's going to go and start chewing people's legs off. So instead, what he does, he does with his little puppy, puppy dog ears and his little eyes is he distracts them. So he's a, he's a stealth Amigo. So he can distract people, giving you the opportunity to either go for the stealth kill, plant the C4 and back out for an ambush or or just sneak right by. And that's in, in big contrast then to say like Guapo, who's the crocodile that you saw, who you do expect to go chewing people's legs off. And indeed you send him in and he's just going to create havoc in that compound. And again, you can use that as a, you know, as a distraction or you can use that alongside, you know, your own attack and, and, and attack on the military. Well, I'm planning to use Chorizo to distract people and then you're going to hear the Macarena happening and then chaos ensues and hopefully there's a Wilhelm scream somewhere dotted in that whole chaos. Um, thank That's you so much. Plan. Thank you so much for your time. 